Hello everyone, this is Gail, and this is our quilt squared number three. Have no idea what this is called. I've tried finding a name for it, so if you know what it is, then I'm a, I'm happy for you because I haven't been able to find a name for this. But I'm finding it difficult to get quilt squares that are simple enough for us to make into a cane and have the shapes that I need. I don't want, I can't do something that's got like 15 different shapes to it. Little, little triangles, big triangles, little squares, big squares, diamond shapes. I just can't do that. And uh, so I found this, and of course this is in fabric. Let me get my, it's not a pointer, but that's what I'm going to use for pointer, a pointer. Let me bring it in a little bit, show you This is, of course, for fabric, and they've used triangles. But when I was looking at this, I thought, well, I can do this as a square, put, and this as a square, and that as a square on both of these. Instead of using triangles and put them together, uh, you know, like these are two large triangles, those are two small triangles. So with clay, I think I'm going to do the... Um, squares and then I'll worry with these triangles around the outside after I get this part constructed. So I'm going to go ahead, I've selected these dies, that's my square. This is the only little equilateral triangle that I have, but I have this one that's a little bit larger and it's got a round bottom but if you've ever made a triangle on your work surface, you'll know it's not going to be a problem at all mashing that down to make that flat. So these are the three shapes I'm going to use. I'm going to use this one in the white and use this one in the white because I'm, I'm surrounding all of them in white. But right now I'm just going to concentrate on the inside and I'm, I've chosen some gray. And again, this is scrap. Um... And then I've got some scrap pink. And the pink is a little bit variegated. In order to get it conditioned, I had to blend it more than I wanted to. But it's got a little bit of variation to it. Unfortunately, this is just gray. But I'm going to go ahead and extrude my squares, and then I'll be back. Okay, I have cut two, I'm um, not cut, I have extruded two nine inch lengths of the gray and two of the pink and I had put them together because I'm going ahead and cut them to size. I need six of each color. So I'm going to, I made these nine inches thinking I could cut three, three inch pieces from each one. Let me just make that straight. Okay, so this is not lined up on my one inch mark because the one inch mark is way over here. So I've got it on my two inch mark. So two, if I cut in three inches, that's going to be five inches. And then five and three is eight. So I'll cut it eight inches and that leaves this. So now I have six of each color. So let's start lining them up. I'm going to start with the pink and I'm going to put two together. Now remember, this is usually done in fabric, so it might it might look a little different when we're finished. This clay doesn't seem to stick together. I think some of this pink was souffle. And I'll set this one on top, which will give us this L shape that we're looking for. So then, 
I'm going to do the same with the gray. I'm going to put two together. And then put one on top of one of them. That gives us another L shape. Now we're going to put these L shapes together. See, that's not right. Let me get my picture out. Let me look at my picture. So I've got the two long ones. That's this way. And I've got the L shape going this way. And this fits down in there. There we go. Makes much more sense when I have a picture to look at. So just make sure that everything is stuck together. So that's what we've got now. We've got this, which is this part of the cane. So let's put together another pink one. And again, you put two together. And lay one on top. And look at your picture. This one's going to go this way and is going to fit right in there. Whoops, I lost my pink. Let's see if that's where it was. I think it was on the outside. Let me put it back. It was there. You know, it might be easier. Let me go back. Cuz I'm well this one I got okay. Pull this one out. I'll just work on it this way. So there we go. So then I need a pink one in here. Instead of trying to do all the blocks at one time, I think I'm going to just try putting it together the way the picture shows it. So now I'm coming this way. I've got a dark one and a pink. Then I need two darks. And then I want two pinks out here. This just doesn't want to stick for some reason today. And then this other gray one comes out here. So there's the inside of our cane, but we can't do a lot with it until we fill in some of these blanks. So, like this, I need a triangle there, a triangle there, a triangle there, and a triangle there. And I'm thinking, looking at this, that this is the size triangle I'm going to need. So I'm going to extrude some white using this die, the one with the rounded bottom, and I'll be back. Okay, I've extruded my white, and see it's got that round top on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it on my table and just press it down to make that 
flat and just work my way down that's one thing about clay is you can improvise and there's lots of things because it's because it's malleable you know it you can make it any shape you want so I got the basic shape with my extruder only because I'm trying to keep this as neat as I can but I may not be quite so successful but anyway so according to that I needed four triangles three inches long so let me cut on the 1 and the 12 and then I'll cut at 9 and at 6 and at 3. I love having this mat. Now before you do this it would help to go in and get your squares lined up the way you want them. Make sure that they're lined up all the way down, like this one wasn't. You can look at it this way and this way to see what it's looking like. Okay, so let me stick this in here. But that's another option. If you didn't want to try the triangle, you can extrude a square and put it in there and then just trim it off. But looking at this, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get it back into a square. And I'm thinking a square would probably have been the easiest thing, but right now I'm just looking at holding my cane together. Let me take a slice off. And you can see when we reduce, some of these little holes will disappear, but it goes this way. So looking at this, this is that triangle. And this didn't get very flat. I'm going to just take my white and press it down to make it a little flatter so that it'll look similar to the picture. And you may have to slice off a little bit. Matter of fact, I think I will. I'm going to just slice off just the very top. It would help if I used a sharp blade. Let me get out my Lucy clay blade which is so sharp you have to be very careful with this because it is very very sharp and just sliced a little bit too much off this one Let me just put this back here. And slice from this side. Let me press that back down. And press from, cut from this side. There we go. So now that's flat. Cutting this way might be easier because I can see where I'm going with my blade. And as you can see, I'm not doing very well cutting straight. I 
which is one reason I like using extruded shapes because I don't have to worry about this. And one more. Now just slicing off this white that's hanging, that's above the other colors. Let me put this back in my holder so I don't cut myself. It's a very good blade, but it's very, very sharp. And I think I'm going to put this in with my scrap just because it's got some of the other colors mixed in with it. So there we go. There's that. So let's look here. So now I need a triangle here. I need this on this these four corners, on the four. Okay, got that. So let me do some more white, and I'll be back. Okay, so this time I needed four. And the flat part of the triangle goes towards the color. And I didn't press these out. It actually needs to be a little bit bigger than this. So this die may not work. Let me try pressing it down. Making the bottom wider. I still don't think that's going to be wide enough. Nope. So what I'm going to do, you know, not, when one thing doesn't work, try something else. I'm going to just roll this into a long rod. And using this, I need to make it about as wide as that. And I'll make my own triangles without having to worry with the extruder. And I don't want it to get real thin. But I do need it to be 12 inches wide. Yeah, because I need four. And then try to press this down into a triangle where the base is about as wide as two of these squares. I'm going to press this side down first. You can press with both fingers and then you can adjust it later. edge and so is this one and then just press down with your fingers like this you know pinch your fingers like this and just press down and make your triangle the size that you need it like I said we need it about as wide as two of these blocks. If it's not exact, that's okay. We can adjust that later. But 
just press down until the bottom is where you want it. Then we'll refine it with a ruler in just a minute. my ruler out. Got a new plastic ruler. But then just press this in to make this edge as straight as you can and it will also flatten this part if you press it at the right angle. And then same thing on this side. Just press in with the ruler to get the edges as straight as you can and to flatten out that side. Now we'll see how this works. So let me cut this at one, two, three, six. And you may have to refine it a little bit, but you can do that after you get it on here. You see, that fits much better. Just make sure it comes to both ends. Oops, there's my die that I didn't use. And you can just press these a little bit with your fingers to kind of blend in that little seam. You can do the same thing over here. If not, you can put a little strip of white on it in a little bit, which will take care of that. The important thing is, is that we're making a corner with these three white pieces. So let's put the next one on. On this side, we'll put this on the gray and just make sure that it's going on straight all the way down. trying to adjust this as I put it on. I probably shouldn't. I should just put it on and then adjust it. But again, this is going to be your corner, so you want to make that square and at the same time kind of close in these little spaces. So now we have half of a square. See there? This one didn't appear to be quite straight on that side, so I just pressed it with my blade, my not sharp blade. And this one isn't quite as wide as the others. Let me see if this one works better. See, there's now three corners, and I didn't think the pink was quite as wide as the gray. See, there's our cane, and you can I'm going to put white around it, but I just want to flatten it out a little bit. And I need to condition some more white to wrap it. And you 
cut this end off. I've been cutting the other end off. But there you go. There is our cane. Whatever the name is. And like I said, I'm going to wrap this in white. I'm going to make sure these corners are square. And then I'll be back. Okay, I have rolled out some white on a number three setting because I do want a little bit of white. You know, I don't want it really a, to be a thin coat. And just make sure when you turn this corner that you keep your square. So then just use your rod to flatten it and pinch your corners. I'm going to do this again. Just want to make sure this white is adhered to all those little crevices that were in between those colors. Just want to make sure doesn't doesn't hurt to play safe. And there you go. There is our cane. I think this is number three. And like I say, if you know the name of this cane, please let me know. Because I don't know what else, what to call it. But there you go. Of course, as I reduce this, all these little crevices will fill in. So there we go. Hope you like this one. This is only two more to go. If I can find two more that are easy to do. I do have another one I'm going to try uh, called an Ohio Star. But I'm not sure. It looks kind of complicated, so I don't know that I'm going to end up with that or not. But I'm going to try that one and see how that works. If it works out okay, then we'll be all set. So there you go. So this is, like I said, number three in the series. I will In two weeks, I will be posting number four. And then in two weeks after that, I will do number five. And after we do five, then we'll do a project with a slice from each one. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I know I do. I, I like playing with stuff like this. And if you have any suggestions of uh, quilt blocks that you think might be easily adaptable to polymer clay, please let me know. Uh, I'm searching and searching and searching. I'm looking at Pinterest. I'm looking just about everywhere to try to find some that are easily adaptable to polymer clay. So, come back on Friday for my Friday Frolics. Bye-bye.